Reading to the Bible in one year, August 22nd, 1 Samuel 14, Romans chapter 12, Jeremiah 51, and Psalm 30. That same day, Saul's son, Jonathan, said to uh, the attendant who carried his weapons, Come, let's cross over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. However, he did not tell his father. Saul was staying under the pomegranate tree in Migron, on the outskirts of Gibeah. The troops with him numbered about 600. Ahijah, who was wearing an ephod, was also there. He was the son of Ahitub, the brother of Ichabod, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the Lord's priest at Shiloh. But the troops did not know that Jonathan had left. There were sharp columns of rock on both sides of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine garrison. One was named Bozes and the other Sena. One stood to the north in front of Michmash and the other to the south in front of Geba. Jonathan said to the attendant who carried his weapons, Come, let's cross over to the garrison of these uncircumcised men. Perhaps Yahweh will help us. Nothing can keep the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. His armor bearer responded, Do what is in your heart. Go ahead. I'm completely with you. All right, Jonathan replied. We'll cross over to the men and if they sorry and let them see us. If they say, Wait until we reach you, then we'll stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, come up, then we'll go up, because the Lord has handed them over to us. That will be our sign. They let themselves be seen by the Philistine garrison, and the Philistine said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they've been hiding. The men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bear, come up and we'll teach you a lesson. They said, follow me, Jonathan told his armor bear, for the Lord has handed them over to Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet with his armor bearer behind him. Jonathan cut them down and his armor bearer followed and, fill it and finished them off. In that first assault, Jonathan and his armor bearer struck down about 20 men in a half acre field. Terror spread through the Philistine camp in the open fields to, to all the troops. Even the garrison and the raiding parties were terrified. The earth shook and terror uh, spread from God. When Saul's watchmen in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, they saw the panicking troops scattering in every direction. So Saul said to the troops with him, Call the roll and determine who has left us. They called the roll and saw that Jonathan and his armor bearer were gone. Saul told Ahijah, Bring the ark of God, for it was with the Israelites at that time. While Saul spoke to the priest, the panic in the Philistine camp increased in intensity. So Saul said to the priest, Stop what you're doing. Saul and all the troops with him assembled and marched to battle. And there the Philistines were fighting against each other in great confusion. There were Hebrews from the area who had gone earlier into the camp to join the Philistines, but even they joined the, uh, joined the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. When all the Israelite men who had been hiding in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were fleeing, they also joined Saul and Jonathan in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day. The battle extended beyond beth Aven, and all the men of Israel were worn out that day, for Saul had placed the troops under an oath. The man who eats any food before evening, before I have taken vengeance on my enemies, is cursed. So none of the troops tasted any food. Everyone went into the forest, and there was honey on the ground. When the troops entered the forest, they saw the flow of honey, but none of them ate any of it because they feared the oath. However, Jonathan had not heard his father make the troops swear the oath. He reached out the end of his staff uh, he was carrying and dipped it in the honeycomb. And when he ate the energy, right, when he ate the energy, when he ate the honey, he had renewed energy. Then one of the troops said, Your father made the troops solemnly swear the man who eats food today is cursed. And the troops are exhausted. And Jonathan replied, My father has brought trouble to the land. Just look at how I have renewed energy because I tasted a little of this honey. 
how much better if the troops had eaten freely today from the plunder they took from their enemies. Then the slaughter of the Philistines would have been much greater. The Israelites struck down the Philistines that day from Michmash all the way to Aijalon. Since the, Philistines, sorry, since the Israelites were completely exhausted, they rushed to the plunder, took sheep, goats, cattle, and calves, and slaughtered them on the ground and ate the meat with the blood still in it. Remember, God says absolutely not because the blood is the life and the life belongs to God. Some reported it's a Saul. Look, the troops are, are sinning against Yahweh by eating meat with the blood still in it. And Saul said, you have been unfaithful. Large, uh, sorry, roll a large stone over here at once. And he said, go among the troops and say to them, let each man bring me his ox or his sheep. Do the, slaughter, <clears throat> do the slaughtering here, then you can eat it. Don't sin against Yahweh by eating meat with the blood in it. So every one of the troops brought his ox that night and slaughtered it there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first time he had built an altar to the Lord. Saul said, let's go down after the Philistines tonight and plunder them until morning. Don't even let one remain. Do whatever you want, the troops replied. But the priest said, let's, let's approach God here. So Saul inquired of God, should I go after the Philistines? Will you hand them over to Israel? But God did not answer him that day. Saul said, all you leaders of the troops come here. Let's investigate how this sin has occurred today. Surely as the Lord who lives saved Israel, or sorry, saves Israel, even if it is because of my son Jonathan, he must die. Not one of the troops answered him. So he said to all Israel, you will all be on one side and I and my son Jonathan will be on the other side. And all the troops replied, do whatever you want. So Saul said to the Lord, God of Israel, why have you not answered your servant today? If the unrighteousness is in me or in my son Jonathan, Lord God of Israel, give Urim. But if the fault is with your people, Israel, give Thummim. Jonathan and Saul were selected and the troops were cleared of the charge. Then Saul said, Cast the lot between me and my son Jonathan. And Jonathan was selected. And Saul commanded him, Tell me what you did. And Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey. With the end of my staff I was carrying. I am ready to die. And Saul declared to him, May God punish me and do so severely, if you do not die, Jonathan. But the people said to Saul, Must, must Jonathan die? He accomplished such a great deliverance for Israel? No, as the Lord lives, not a hair of his head will fall to the ground, for he worked with God's help today. So the people redeemed Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul gave up the pursuit of the Philistines, and the Philistines returned to their own territory. When Saul assumed the kingship over Israel, he fought against all his enemies in every direction against Moab, against the Ammonites, uh, Edom, against the kings of Zobah and the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he caused havoc. He fought bravely, defeated the Amalekites, and rescued Israel from those who plundered them. Saul's sons were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Malkishua, or Malkishua. The names of his two daughters were Merab, his firstborn, and Melchol, sorry, Michael, the younger. The name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, a daughter of Ahimaaz. The name of the commander of his army was Abner, um, son of Saul's uncle, Ner. Saul's father was Kish. Abner was, uh, rather, Abner's father was Ner of Abiel. The conflict uh, with the Philistines was fierce all of Saul's days. So whenever Saul noticed any strong or valiant man, he enlisted him. And that's all the notes. Let's go on to Romans chapter 12. Now, as said before, um, this is the practical application of the text. Given all the theological information we've gone over before, this is how now you should live. Let's begin. Therefore, given all of the previous information we have, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. 
Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we all have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it in, excuse me, use it according to the proportion of one's faith. If service, use it in service. If teaching, in teaching. If exhorting, in exhortation. Giving with generosity, leading with diligence, showing mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil and cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters, and take the lead in honoring one another. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs and pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. And give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath, because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your hun uh, enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you'll be heaping uh, fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. And that is all the notes. Let's go into Jeremiah 51 now. This is what Yahweh says. I'm about to rouse the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon and against the population of Leb Kamai. I will send strangers to, to Babylon who will scatter her and strip her land bare, for they will come against her from, the, from every side in the day of disaster. Don't let the archer string his bow. Don't let him put on his armor. Don't spare her young men completely destroy her entire army. Those who are slain will fall in the land of the Chaldeans, those who were pierced through in her streets, for Israel and Judah are not left widowed <clears throat> by their God, the God of armies, though their land is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Leave Babylon. Save your lives, each of you. Don't perish because of her guilt. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will repay her what she deserves. Babylon was a gold cup in the Lord's hand, making the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations go mad. Suddenly Babylon fell and was shattered. Wail for her. Get balm for her wound. Perhaps she can be healed. We tried to heal Babylon, but she could not be healed. Abandon her. Let each of us go to his own land. For her judgments extend to the sky and reaches as far as the clouds. The Lord has brought about our vindication. Come, let's tell it in Zion. What the Lord, our God, has accomplished. Sharpen the arrows. Fill the quivers. The Lord has roused the spirit of the kings of the Medes because his plan is aimed at Babylon to destroy her. For it is the Lord's vengeance, vengeance for his temple. 
raise up the signal flag against the walls of Babylon, fortify the watch post, set the watchman in place, prepare the ambush. For the Lord has both planned and accomplished what he has threatened uh, against those who live in Babylon. You who reside by abundant water, rich in treasures, your end has come, your thread life is cut. The Lord of armies has won by himself. I will fill you up with men as with locusts, and they will sing the victory song over you. He has made the earth by his power, established the world by his wisdom, and spread out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the water and the heavens are tumultuous, and he causes the clouds to rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain and brings the wind from its storehouses or from his storehouses. Everyone is stupid and ignorant. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his carved image, for his cast images are a lie. There is no breath in them. They are all worthless, a work to be mocked. At the time of their punishment, they will be destroyed. Jacob's portion is not like these, because he is the one who formed all things. Israel is the, is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of armies is his name. You are my war club, my weapons of war. With you I will smash nations. With you I will bring kingdoms to ruin. With you I will smash the horse and its rider. With you I will smash the chariot and its rider. With you I will smash uh, man and woman. With you I will smash the old man and the youth. With you I will smash the young man and the young woman. With you I will smash the shepherd and his flock. With you I will smash the farmer and his ox team. With you I will smash governors and officials. Before your very eyes I will repay Babylon and all the residents of Chaldea for all their evil they have done in Zion. This is the Lord's declaration. Look, I am against you, devastating mountain. This is the Lord's declaration. You devastate the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you roll you down from cliffs, and turn you into a charred mountain. No one will be able to retrieve a cornerstone or, or a foundation stone from you, because you will become desolate forever. This is the Lord's declaration. Raise a signal flag in the land. Blow a ram's horn among the nations. Set apart the nations against her. Summon kingdoms against her. Arat, Mini, Ashkenaz. Appoint a marshal against her. Bring up horses like a swarm of locusts. Set apart the nations for battle against her, the kings of Media, her governors and all her officials, and all the lands they rule. The earth quakes and trembles, because the Lord's intentions against Babylon stand, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. Babylon's warriors have stopped fighting. They sit on their strongholds. Their might is exhausted. They have become like women. Babylon's homes have been set ablaze. Her gate bars are shattered. Messengers, sorry, messenger races to meet messenger and herald to meet herald to announce to the king of Babylon that his city has been captured from end to end. The fords have been seized. The marshes set on fire. The fighting... Uh, sorry, and the fighting men are terrified. For this is what the Lord of armies, the God of hosts, the God of Israel says, Daughter Babylon is like a threshing floor. At the time it is trampled. In just a little while her harvest time will come. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has set me aside like an empty dish. He has swallowed me like a sea monster. He filled his belly with my delicacies. He has vomited me out. Let the violence done to me and my family be done to Babylon, says the inhabitant of Zion. Let my blood be on the inhabitants of Chaldea, says Jerusalem. Therefore, this is what Yahweh says. I am about to champion your cause and take vengeance on your behalf. I will dry up her sea and make her fountain run dry. Babylon will be a heap of rubble, a jackal's den, a desolation 
and an object of scorn without inhabitant. They will roar together like young lions. They will growl like young lions club, uh, cubs. While they are flushed with heat, I will serve them a feast, and I will make them so sorry drunk so that they celebrate. Then they will sleep forever and never wake up. This is the Lord's declaration. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams together with male goats. How Sheshek has been captured, the praise of the whole earth seized. What a horror Babylon has become among the nations. The sea has risen over, uh, risen over Babylon. She is covered with its tumultuous waves. Her cities have become a desolation, an arid desert, a land where no one lives where no human being even passes through. I will punish Bel in Babylon. I will make him vomit what he swallowed. The nations will no longer stream to him. Even Babylon's wall will fall. Come out from among her, my people. Save your lives, each of you, from the Lord's burning anger. May you not become cowardly and fearful when the report is proclaimed in the land, for the report will come one year then another the next year. There will be violence in the land with ruler against ruler. Therefore, look, the days are coming when I will punish Babylon's carved images. Her entire land will, su will suffer shame. And all her slain will lie fallen within her. Heaven and earth will, uh, and, and everything in them will shout for joy over Babylon because the destroyers from the north will come against her. This is the Lord's declaration. Babylon must fall because of the slain of Israel, even as the slain of the whole earth fell because of Babylon. You who have escaped the sword, go and do not stand still. Remember the Lord from far away and let Jerusalem come to your mind. We are ashamed because we have heard insults. Humiliation covers our faces because foreigners have entered the holy places of, of the holy temple, of the Lord's temple. Therefore, look, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration. When I will punish her carved images and the wounded will groan throughout her land. Even if Babylon should ascend to the heavens and fortify her, her tall fortresses, her destroyers will come against her from me. This is the Lord's declaration. The sound of a cry from Babylon. The sound of terrible destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For the Lord is going to devastate Babylon. He will silence her mighty voice. Their waves roar like a huge torrent. The tumult of their voice uh, resounds. For a destroyer is coming against her, against Babylon. Her warriors will be captured. Their bows will be shattered. For the Lord is a God of retribution. He will certainly repay. I will make her princes and sages drunk, along with her governors, officials, and warriors. Then they will fall asleep together, rather than they will fall asleep forever and never wake up. This is the king's declaration. The Lord of armies is his name. This is what the Lord of Armies says. Babylon's thick walls will be totally demolished. Her high gates set ablaze. The people have labored, or will have labored, for nothing. The nations will weary themselves only to feed the fire. This is what the prophet Jeremiah commanded Sariah, son of Neriah, son of Messiah, the quartermaster, when he went to Babylon with King Zedekiah of Judah, in the fourth year of Zedekiah's reign. Jeremiah wrote on one scroll about all the disaster that would come to Babylon. All these words were written against Babylon. And Jeremiah told Sariah, When you get to Babylon, see that you read all these words aloud. Say, Lord, you have threatened to cut off this place so that no one will live in it, people or animals. Indeed, it will remain desolate forever. When you have finished reading the scroll, tie a stone to it, and then throw it in the middle of the Euphrates River. Then say, in the same way, Babylon will sink and never rise again 
because of the disaster I am bringing on her. They will grow weary. The words of Jeremiah end here. Let's go on to Psalm 30 now. I will exalt you, Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You, you spared me from among those going down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may stay overnight, but there is joy in the morning. When I was secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you showed your favor, you made me stand like a strong mountain. When you hid your face, I was terrified. Lord, I called to you. I sought favor from my Lord. What gain is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your truth? Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. You turn my lament into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with gladness so that I can sing to you and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. All right, that is all for today. So God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.